Uh, good morning, colleagues. My name is uh, Mr. Mudise David from Barnard Molokwane Comprehensive School in Paris. I am teaching construction grade 10 to 12. So today I'm going to do exa examination uh, prep since we know that our learners are going to write next week, Tuesday on the 10th. So now we may start um, with our presentation. Uh, presentation outline colleagues, the first thing that we're going to look at uh, is area concern from the past diagnostic report. And then number two is a key recommendation. Uh, and I believe uh, we have done a lot of things across the year, so I'm not going to dwell deep on that. And then um, we are also going to look at diagnostic question analysis and then analysis of learner performance in each question. And whatever that you are going to um, deal with colleagues under uh, analysis uh, is based on the um, 2019 uh, civil construction paper. We are also going to look at the uh, roof chapter and question since we know that um, roof takes about 80 marks of the question paper. So most of learners are not doing um, good based on the past diagnostic report. And then the last thing that we are going to look at is going to be excavation uh, chapter and we are also going to look at some few questions and um, memorandums. Uh, area of concerns were identified in the, in, uh, in the past diagnostic report. There was general observation that not all topics were equally covered in, prison, uh, in preparation for examination. Number two, it is essential that all prescribed topics in the CAPS are studied and that there is adherence to examination guidelines. Um, although candidates performed well in questions that require low order thinking skills, uh, many learners performed poorly in questions that demanded analytical, evaluative and problem solving skills. Uh, in view of this, teachers are encouraged to expose learners to a wide array of exercises that also include questions that assess higher order thinking skills. Uh, key recommendations. Teachers are discouraged from teaching to the question paper. Um, number two, however, past question paper should be used as a teaching and learning resource. Uh, a question paper serves as one of the resource for revision purposes. And then uh, it must be stressed that the CAPS and examination guideline for civil technology construction must be followed to ensure that all topics are covered. So colleagues, it's very important before our learner can write, all topics, all topics must be covered. And I believe uh, we also check the examination guideline. Every topic has been assessed and there are marks allocated for that particular topic. In view of this point above, it is imperative that learner must have a firm understanding of action verbs that are used in phrasing of questions. Uh, it is also essential that learner understand the meaning of each action verb in its context and in terms of the cognitive demand that is expected. Uh, subject terminology and uh, definition must be clearly understood by learners. Uh, a firm understanding of subject matter can only be guaranteed if learners understand terminology and concepts used in the subject. It is suggested that a closer of subject-specific jargons and their definition is provided to learners. So colleagues, let us look at a diagnostic question analysis. Uh, this includes the following. An analysis of performance of learners in each specific question, stating whether the question was well answered or poorly answered, and the reason why. Common error and misconceptions that were identified in candidate responses, uh, reading this diagnostic in conjunction with the 2019 uh, paper. Suggestion for improvement in relation to teaching and learning content and methodology. So I believe, colleagues, uh, we are using uh, different methods to teach our learners, so and we have different ways of ap approaching things, but it's good if we keep on sharing uh, good practices, how to approach some of the things. Now, colleagues, let us look at um, analysis of learner performance in each, in each question in conjunction with a, a 2019 um, examination paper. So question one, it was uh, uh, safety, material, tools, equipment, and joining. So we know, colleagues, our question paper consists of six questions. So question one, it was generic. So all the um, common errors and misconceptions that I'm going to talk about, uh, 
they are not only coming out from construction paper, even if woodwork and civil services. So in question 1.1, 1 .1, uh, it was eight marks. Candidate had difficulty matching the description in matching items, question with the items. Candidate had to demonstrate deeper insight in the property, uh, properties and principles applied in material and tools that mere identification and use thereof and were not fully equipped to respond uh, uh, in the required manner. So colleagues, I believe we, we, we know that uh, 1.1, 1, 1 .1, it was a multiple choice question. So it was very difficult for our learners to match uh, their coulombs and uh, get marks for that. So most of learners were not credited um, in 2019 um, examination. So number B, uh, in question 1.5, Kainet responded poorly to the question relating to the transporting of material and gave general uh, answer relating to the handling of material instead. Uh, number C, many candidates responded incorrectly to the safety requirement related to scaffolding plank. Instead, they gave responses that were pertained to scaffolding um, in, in, in general. So colleagues, uh, while we are busy preparing our learners, please, please, colleagues, let us also teach our learners to give um, direct answers, not just a blanket um, answer. So number D, uh, in 1.8.1, many candidates uh, describe the fastener instead of identifying it. So colleagues, it's very important um, for learners to read the question with understanding before they can attempt to answer any question. Suggestion for improvement uh, for question number one. Uh, it is recommended that teacher ensure that learner fully understand the concepts related to material and safety instead of rote learning. It is important that learner work physically with tools and equipment to become familiar with them and the skills of using them. The challenges of answering this type of questions can be overcome by teaching learners how to select matching items by means of elimination. Number B, uh, it will be beneficial to, learner, to learners if they are taught to read the question carefully and to isolate the exact aspect within the topic that needs to be responded to. Teachers should divide topics with a long list of possible answers into smaller uh, subsections and group the relevant answers with the sub, uh, subtopics during teaching. Learners should be taught how to interpret and respond to this type of questions. Number D, more emphasis should be placed on the use of correct terminology when identifying objects. It is advisable that teachers focus strongly on the use of correct terminology during teaching or when making class or homework of learners. So, right, colleagues, um, question number two, uh, remember, question number two is still uh, a, a generic question for civil services, construction, and woodwork. So, and it's a graphics as means of a communication. So, colleagues, uh, in this chapter, we know there are a lot of things that learner must know: a house, uh, a floor plan, elevations, site plans. They must know how to interpret, and they, they must know how to give the correct symbols and all that stuff. So, common. Uh, errors and mis uh, misconceptions. Number A, many candidates experience challenges to read and interpret the floor plan and elevation and were not able to identify and interpret drawing symbol. Number B, poor performance by candidate was noted in question 2.2 where the identification of a hip roof posed a challenge uh, to learners. So colleagues, it is important when, when we deal with um, a graphics as means of communication. We must not only uh, focus on the textbook that we are using. Uh, let us use different uh, res uh, resources and expose our learners to different questions so that they can be able to answer uh, some, some of the questions. So in question, uh, number C, question 2.5, most candidates identify the component as a door opening instead of the door. Uh, number D, um, the majority of candidates were not able to identify the symbol for wash for for for, for wash to who. Number E, some candidate could not identify the drawing symbols in uh, two point thirteen. So colleagues, uh, I believe some of the drawing symbols we do them from grade ten, grade eleven, and grade twelve. 
So let us all try to do uh, justice starting from, from grade 10 so that when our learners are going to write final exam, uh, they are not going to struggle with most of the symbols there. So number F, uh, in question 2.15, many candidates interpreted the question to name a material that should be used instead of material that should not be used. Number G, in question 2.16, uh, the responses of candidates indicated that they were not familiar with the property and use of material used for the production of sanitary uh, fitments. So, colleagues, um, I believe our learners come across different uh, material that, that are used for different things. So, I think uh, in our classes in uh, every day, if we talk to them about these things, they will be uh, able to answer such questions. So number H, uh, a significant number of candidates could not identify the landing on the staircase and also misinterpreted the question. Instead of responding to the use or function of the indicated symbol on the drawing, candidates identified the symbols. Number I, in question 2.28, the majority of candidates had difficulty in justifying why the floor plan uh, was relevant to the elevation. This question requires insight into the differences between a ground floor plan and, and that of the first floor. So number J, uh, it says most candidates were unable to explain the consequence of not installing a seal below a window. Number K, many candidates could not correctly reduce the dimensions of the wall thickness and room sizes from the correct elevation. They are also not write them down next to one another and add the dimension to obtain the total length of the wall correctly. So colleagues, um, this chapter of graphics as means of a communication uh, carries a lot of marks. It, it, it carries um, how much? 40 marks of the question paper. So it's very important when we teach our learner this question, we must not rely on EGD guys. So we must try to come up with the floor plans. We must also uh, do some interpretations uh, correctly with our learners so that they will be able to gain a lot of marks. Imagine if learners lose 40, 40 marks. So um, suggestion for improvement for uh, graphics as means, of, uh, as means of a communication, building plans should be used during teaching to familiarize learners in interpreting building plans. Model of the profile of different types of roof layout should be made uh, by learners to help them understand the shape of the roof when being viewed from the top, front, or side. More analytical question and worksheet similar to question two in the question paper should be done in class. So colleagues, uh, here we have to be more creative when, it, when we have to come up with questions. We must not only rely uh, on the uh, uh, um, exemplar paper, 2018 paper and 2019 paper. We must be more and more creative so that we can be able to uh, assist or help our learners to be able to answer um, such questions. The sense code of practice for drawing symbol should be used when teaching sections that require learner to draw or identify drawing symbols used in the building industry. A teacher should develop worksheet comprising a schedule of all drawing symbols used in the drawing of floor plans for learner to complete. Number F, a tour of school will be beneficial to learner to show them the different material that can be used as a trimmings around um, the roof. Even if colleagues, uh, okay, it can be tour around the school or we can try to organize some pictures and show our learners. Number G, samples of sanitary uh, fitments must be made available to learner to, to aid them with the identification and fa familiarize them with the property and the use. Uh, learner should draw floor plan with elevation so that they can identify the elevation uh, relevant to the size of the floor plan. So colleagues, uh, I, I, I understand that when it comes to grade 12, we don't have um, more time or time is not allocated for us to give our learners drawing. But uh, if we can give them more drawings 
or just create time to give them drawings that they can draw, even if to match uh, uh, the floor plan with the elevations, like the EGD uh, uh, civil drawing from grade 11 they are doing. I think our learners, do, uh, they will have more and more insight. Uh, number I, it is recommended that teachers use correct terminology during teaching, especially when referring to units with length and height. Number J, it will be beneficial to learner if teacher use copies of building plans when teaching this topic. Uh, specific references should be made to different items and symbols used on building plans. It is recommended that learner be taken on an excursion to view multi-story buildings uh, while teacher explain the different facet of the building. This facet can be the linked to the symbol and part of the building on the building plan. Photos and video can be used to demonstrate the different parts of the building if an, if, uh, an excursion uh, is not available. Uh, number K, learners should be exposed to more calculations involving area, perimeter, and length of wall to ensure that learners have mastered the mathematical concept. So, colleagues, for number K, um, I believe here we can talk to uh, EGD guys, since we have five days before our learners can write, uh, if, if we can ask them for their civil services, uh, uh, civil civil drawings questions, because I, 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 I saw them, they have uh, parameters, areas, length, they are dealing with math uh, mathematical concepts that I believe will help um, our learners. Question three, colleagues, uh, it's roofs, staircases, and joining. Uh, common errors and misconceptions. Number A, it was observed that many candidates were not able to recall terminology, angles and diamet uh, uh, diameter uh, of the roof in question 3.1. So colleagues, uh, we must remember that a uh, roof is one of the topics that have more marks, uh, 80 marks. So when we treat that topic, we must treat it so that uh, uh, our learners, they can understand um, everything. There. So number B, candidates were not familiar with the weight baluster in the staircase that resulted in the poor uh, answering of question 3.2. Number C, in question 3.5, 15 marks, most candidates attempted to draw roof truss, but the positioning of the wall plate, tie beam, and the ridge beams still pose a challenge to them. So colleagues, um, this really shows some of us who are not giving our learners more time to, to, to draw according to scale. So uh, let us uh, uh, train or give our learners more drawings as they appear uh, on our roof chapter so that they can be familiar with a lot of things. When they come across some su uh, such questions, it will be easier for them to answer those questions. Number D, candidates struggle to draw to scale the components of a roof truss Candidates did not adhere to the prescribed scale. And colleagues, uh, if learners don't adhere to scale, because there are those questions whereby uh, a, 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 a markers they use a scale, um, what's that, a transparency paper to mark a, a mask, so learners are going to lose a um, lot of marks because of that. So suggestion for improvement. Uh, it is recommended that sample of roof member be given uh, to learners so that they gain a break in drawing the member of the actual size and in indicating the dimension on the drawings. More detailed presentation on the different part of staircases should be done to prepare learner to answer theoretical questions on staircase as well as the drawing thereof. Teachers should stress the differences between line diagram and two or three dimensional drawing to learners. Number C, it is recommended that teacher provide learner with more exercises on the drawing of roof trusses uh, in order for learner to develop their drawing skills and understanding of different types of roof trusses. So colleagues, um, let's move to uh, question four. We are still busy with, uh, 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 with, with, with our diagnostic report uh, before we can look at some of the topics. Um, question four is excavation, formwork, tools and equipment and material. And we know colleagues, uh, excavation uh, way more marks uh, for, 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 for question four, of which is 14 marks. So it is very important, even though when we deal with excavations, 
uh, we prepare our learners well so that they are able to answer uh, such questions. So if we can look, 4.1.4, uh, candidates were not able to identify the depth of a trench for non-bracing or trenches. Many candidates could not differentiate the polling board for loose and firm soil in figure A and figure B. Number C, poor performance was recorded for 4.2.3 due to a lack of content knowledge in, in form work. Most candidates were not able to differentiate between the spacing of a, po a polling board and the different soil type. D, most candidates uh, were not able to explain uh, what water retaining material is in question 4.6. Number E, most candidates were not able to draw the formwork for a beam uh, with an attached to a floor slab. And colleagues, if you can look at marks for number E, it's 18 marks. So it's very, very important, colleagues, to do most of drawing with our learners because drawing, they are carrying uh, more marks and our learners are losing marks so let us help them not to lose a lot of marks. Suggestions for improvement for question four. Teachers should focus more on the topic of excavation in order for learners to have more in-depth insight of the topic. Teachers should develop possible questions on excavation which will assist the learner in understanding the content. Number B, a distinction should be made between polling, polling board and rolling board with regard to their positioning in loose and firm soil. Number C, a model of formwork for different types of soil structure will assist learner in gaining better understanding uh, of formwork for various soil type. It will be beneficial, uh, uh, it will benefit learners, sorry, uh, if they are exposed to water re uh, retaining material that are used for curing uh, concrete. Number E, uh, the model should be made in the workshop for all concrete structure requiring formwork that are listed in CAPS. It must be explained to learner why each component of the formwork is placed uh, at the particular point, its positioning and the purpose that the component serves. So colleagues, for such topics, we can just make some scale models uh, at school as, a, as, as our teaching aid so that we can teach and uh, prepare our learners well. And I believe if our learners have more insight, uh, they will be able to uh, pass their examination. Question five, colleagues. A plaster and script, brickwork and graphics as means of a communication. Uh, common errors and misconceptions. Uh, Number A, in question 5.3, many candidates were not familiar with the property of a plaster. Uh, number B, 5.5 and 5.5.1 uh, and 5.5.2. Many candidates have difficulty in identifying the different strata of paved area and were not able to state why a paved area may collapse. So it's very important, colleagues, even if uh, we can just organize some pictures from our yard and show our learners some of the things so that they can gain a better understanding. Number C, most learners were not able to draw a course of the cavity wall correctly in 5.6 and most of them, uh, colleagues, they were not credited uh, seven marks for their mistakes. So number D, in question 5.7 of which is 14 marks, only few candidates through, uh, through the horizontal section through a window a frame showing how it is attached to a wall. Many candidates could not differentiate between a horizontal and a vertical section and hence through wrong section. So um, let us check the suggestion for improvement, colleagues. For properties of building material, is a critical aspect in the selection of the correct material to suit the purpose. More emphasis should be placed on the property of the building material. Number B, it will be beneficial to learner if they uh, practically apply the process of paving. Um, even if we, we can do a dry packing of paving at the back of our workshop colleagues, I believe it will assist our learners to have better understanding. Learners should dry pack a few consecutive course of a cavity wall to enhance uh, their understanding 
of the topic. Number D, more emphasis should be placed on the uh, difference between horizontal and vertical section views of part of the buildings. Right, colleagues. Uh, let's move to uh, question number six. Uh, is the reinforcement in concrete foundations, concrete floors, and quantity? Um, common errors and misconceptions. Number A, in question 6.4, the explanation of the installation process of in situ driven pipe pose a challenge to a significant number of candidates. So colleagues, um, let us try to help our kids to understand the, uh, uh, the foundation chapter because uh, it also carries uh, less marks, I understand, but let us assist them. Uh, number B, 6.5.2. Candidate could not identify three factors to be considered after the casting of a concrete for suspended um, floor. Uh, in question 6.6, .6, many candidates were not able to draw the reinforcement concrete beam from the given specification correctly and were not familiar with the correct name of different members of the reinforcement. Number D, many candidates could not calculate the correct length uh, of wall plate and the number of roof terraces uh, in question 6.7. And I, I also believe uh, uh, that um, quantity is still one of the topics that most of learners are struggling with. And learners, they are just going to lose 10 marks just like that. So colleagues, let us help them and make them understand uh, this chapter. So let us look at suggestion for uh, improvement for question number six. Model can be used during teaching to explain the difference between the installation process of the different types of concrete piles. Video clip may also be used um, if models are not available. The hydration process of concrete needs to be clearly explained to learner for them to properly understand the treatment of concrete after it has been uh, cast. Number C, a model should be made in the workshop for all concrete structure requiring formwork that are listed in caps. It must be explained to learner why each component of the formwork uh, is placed at a particular position, um, its position and the purpose of that component. So I still repeat colleagues, if we can, if we can make scale model, which we don't have to buy uh, big boards and construct big formworks, just small ones that we can use as a, a prototype. Number D, more exercises on calculations of quantity of material for building should be given uh, to learners to develop a better understanding of the topic. So colleagues, uh, that was the uh, uh, our conclusion for diagnostic report that we read in conjunction with a 2019 paper. Now let us start to look at our first chapter roof uh, that uh, carries uh, 18 marks that I still believe most of learners are struggling, but I, I believe after today, learners will have better understanding and uh, they will be able to gain um, more marks. So let us look at our chapter. Uh, a roof is a structure that forms the external upper covering of the building. Roof terraces support a uh, roof covering as well as a ceiling of the building. Uh, the slope of a roof is referred to as the pitch and it is measured in degrees. Pitch slope downwards in two directions um, at an angle from the central ridge. Mono pitch roof like lean to roof slope only in one direction. The pitch of the uh, uh, roof is less than 10 degree. A double pitch roof have pitched greater than 10 degree uh, to the horizontal plane. Right, <coughs> uh, colleagues, uh, a roof must be designed to withstand weather conditions such as wind and rain. Uh, uh, must also be strong enough to carry the weight of the roof covering. A roof must also be durable and, and enhance the appearance um, uh, of the building. So as we can see colleagues we have uh, our uh, picture there that shows a uh, roof uh, whereby a hip roof has been used uh, i believe we can see we have our ridge capping there and the type of the roof that be, that has been used there uh, is tile so we can look at type of roof um,
type of roofs we have lean to roof single hole terraces mono pitch couple roof hot terraces w terrace -terrace or fink terrace king post and fan terraces and we also have a caesar terraces there so colleagues let's look um, at uh, roof terraces uh, the design and construction of roof, roof terraces should meet the following requirement number one roof terrace must be steady enough to carry uh, uh, the roof covering safe safely able to withstand wind and other forces that act on them i believe we saw we had a lot of rains and most of uh, our houses still have uh, roofs but if the roof was not constructed well uh, i believe we will we'll always see disasters uh, number three provide adequate height in any room immediately below the roof and ceiling assembly uh, should not allow the accumulation of rain water upon the roof surfaces uh, the last one it will uh, neat and solid to enhance the appearance of the building colleagues i believe here under the construction details the pitch roof truss like uh, we can see we are having uh, our king post and we know our king post uh, it, it, it has a king uh, it has a king post in the middle and then uh, two rafters and we also have our tie beam and then uh, a gang nail is used to 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 fix our two rafters to a king post and then our king post to our tie beam so uh, the components of a roof truss must be accurately cut and fitted so that they are drawn uh, 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 tightly together the king post is positioned in the middle of the pitched roof truss and is fixed to the rafters and tie beam it determines the height of the roof truss so i believe i've already explained colleagues as you can see our pictures there so uh, the roof covering is fixed to the button uh, baton must have a nominal breadth of 38 by 38 millimeter and a depth of 38 or 50 millimeter to accommodate a concrete tile the maximum center to center spacing of a baton is uh, 345 millimeter so i believe we can see the picture on our left their colleagues whereby by batons have been uh, fixed onto the rafter and then we can see the roof tile being fixed on top of uh, our um, batons there so uh, the roof covering is fixed to the pilings uh, pilings must have a nominal breadth of 50 millimeter and the depth of 76 millimeter to, to accommodate sheet metal roof covering the maximum center to center spacing of piling is 1220 millimeter so as i believe colleagues we can see uh, we, are, uh, we are having people who are working there uh, we are having uh, our pilings there and then the sheeting is being fixed on top of uh, on top of our palings by by nails right uh, the rich uh, palin must be specifically positioned to facilitate the fixing of the rich capping so we know colleagues after installing um, our uh, roof covering uh, regardless is um is touch roof uh, or concrete tile or galvanized sheeting there we must also uh, put our our rich capping there so that uh, rain may not get access to go through uh, through the roof inside to the house right uh, roof comprises of rafter so we have three different classes we have class a class b and class c let's look at class a at uh, class a roof covering are effective against severe fire test uh, exposure and includes metal sheet and fiber cement sheet at last b roof covering are effective against moderate fire exposure and include clay and concrete tiles or tile of similar material and touch class c roof covering are effective against light fire test exposure uh, exposures and includes metal um, roof tile so let's look at um, roof covering uh, there are many type of roof covering made of various a variety of material uh, the main purpose of a, a roof covering uh, is to keep out rain heat and cold so it's very important for our learners colleagues to know 
uh, the purpose of uh, roof covering so that they will be able to answer a lot of questions uh, relating to roof covering because you can't just talk about roof covering and forgetting uh, batings and palings and also forgetting the, the roof truss and also forgetting the underlay. So once they understand the, 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 the purpose and all the components relating to roof trusses, I believe our learners will gain um, more marks there. Various materials are used uh, as roof. One, we are having uh, sheet metal, we are having concrete roof tiles, we also have touch. And I believe we have seen colleagues from um, diagnostic report, most of the learners didn't perform well when it comes to touch roof, because um, like we are discuss, uh, discussing when it comes to concrete and sheet, uh, uh, whereby they are using palings and bitings. Even if touch roof, they are having their own uh, round, uh, what's that, round uh, palings. So our learners must also have the understanding of this so that they can be able to answer some of the questions. But I believe we will discuss the uh, inst installation method for three of them. So now, let us look at the front elevation of South African uh, hot rust. So colleagues, it is very important for our learners to know all the members of the roof truss. As we can see there, we are having our A as a tie beam, B as a rafter, C as a king post, D as a strut, and then E as a queen post, and then F as a length of a, 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 a tie beam. It will be possible, colleagues, that our learners find themselves having the same drawing, but in, in, in a line a diagram, and they will be requested to use scale to draw a, a, a South African Hot, hot dress in a good proportion. So if they are not being able to draw, I believe they will lose marks. So it is very important to also teach our learners. So colleagues, as we have seen that uh, our lean to roof, uh, water only flows in one um, direction there. I believe we can see we have our parapet wall, of which is 220, and then we have our a wall plate of which is 114 by 38. We also have our rafter, and we know that um, a lean to roof only consists of one rafter, but other roofs they have uh, two, uh, two rafters there. So, colleagues, it's very important for our learners also to know how to draw and according to scale. Maybe the scale it will say one is to 10, one is to 5, or one is to 20. So, learners must just read their um, question with understanding so that they can be able to draw uh, correctly. Now, uh, let's look at the front elevation of a couple roof thrust. Uh, and I believe, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not making any mistake, 2019 paper, they requested or they asked our learners to draw a, a couple roof thrust there. So um, it is very important for our learners to know how to draw, even how to label it because we don't know how the examiner going to phrase the question. But if our learners are prepared well, they will be able to answer such questions. And if we train them how to use a scale correctly to draw the same drawings according to scale, I, I believe they will gain um, more marks. And then uh, front elevation of a closed roof truss, uh, colleagues, like I've said, it's very important for our learners to know how to draw according to scale and also how to label. And I want us colleagues to, to look at something like we, we, we had a, um, if, we, if we, we can go back, we, had, we have a couple roof thrusts and we also have a closed roof thrust. If we can look at the difference, the difference for both drawings is that the closed one, it has number D, whereby it's a, 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 a tie beam. Uh, the first one, uh, of which is a couple roof thrusts, it doesn't have a tie beam. So, but if it, you can look at both drawings, they are similar at any way. So if our learners can understand that, I don't think they will have to spend more time trying to practice each and every drawing. And once they start to get something wrong, um, I believe they will end up losing interest. So if we can uh, build their confidence, they, they will have that enthusiasm to answer uh, most of their questions. Right, colleagues, front elevation of a collar tie roof truss. Uh, I believe even if we can look at the collar tie, we can just compare it to uh, the closed couple and the other one that we spoke about. The difference is 
number D. If we can look here, they gave us a color beam. Né? And then if we can look at a closed one, they gave us what? They gave us a, a tie beam. If, if we can look at the at, uh, a couple roof thrust, it doesn't have anything. It, it only has um, number E of which it's a ridge beam. And it also have two rafters, wall and a wall plate. So as we can um, move forward, uh, colleagues, again, we have our front elevation for king post, of which it only consists with two rafters tie beam, and then a, a king post. So if you remember, colleagues, uh, we spoke about um, a, a, a South African hot dress. Uh, maybe a question will want learners to draw both of them, or it will want learners to differentiate, and once they start to differentiate between the two in, 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 in terms of a drawing, it will take our question to um, a high order questions there. So it is very important if we teach our learners uh, how to differentiate because since every part of the roof truss uh, they are cut to fit uh, properly. So let us prepare our learners well to understand the chapter and not forgetting that the roof uh, chapter consists of or it carries uh, 18 marks of the question paper. Uh, general regulation applicable to a particular type of roof covering. Um, colleagues, no employer is allowed to work on a roof in a rainy weather condition that poses a threat to his or her own, own health. Um, effective and sufficient precautionary measures must be taken in order to prevent, as far as possible, uh, a person, material or equipment from falling from the roof. Uh, devices used to affix roof must be corrosion uh, resistance. So I understand, colleagues, some of the things is the things that we see in our everyday life. So uh, normally I advise learners to try to think how can they understand some of the things better or how can they relate to, uh, to, a, uh, to our environment. Because I will normally ask them when it comes to um, regulation, if their fathers will work in a rainy weather, their, their answer will be no. So if we just relate some of the uh, things that are happening outside, and incorporate, it with, uh, in, incorporate those things in our uh, teaching methods, I believe Lena will have um, better understanding. So colleagues, I'm not going to dwell deeper on the specific regulations for particular type of roof covering, but it is very important that learners understand the regulations for IBR and congregated iron sheet, um, concrete clay or slate, uh, slate roof tile, or touch roof. So it's very, very important. So I'm not going to, 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 to dwell deeper or to read, but please, please, colleagues, let us help our kids and make them understand um, the specific regulation for specific. Because uh, um, we, we, we spoke about the general, and after general, we have the specific. So let us help them to understand the difference there. Spacing of uh, roof terraces member according to roof covering. Uh, remember, colleagues, we spoke that we have three uh, different types of roof coverings, whereby we said steel sheeting, and then we spoke about uh, concrete tile, and then we also spoke about a uh, touch roof there. So this uh, uh, installation of steel sheet roofing, space the paling by calculating the center. Paling are usually fixed at the center to center spacing of up to 900 millimeter. And it's very important, colleagues, if our learners uh, sometimes when they read. Uh, one question, uh, it will come as a low order question, uh, actually asking or requesting for center to center spacing of a uh, sheet, it will be 900. So it's very important if our learners understand uh, those center to center spacing or the distances. The length of a principal rafter is divided by the number of palings uh, determined beforehand to ensure that the distance between palings remain the same. This roofing material requires a pitch of at least 30 degree uh, angle. The type of roof are economically since they require few palings. Right, colleagues, let's look at the installation of a concrete tile. Mark the baiting uh, at the if is usually 50 by 38. One side is angled to serve as a support for fascia board. It is also positioned higher than the other buttons that are 38 by 38 to facilitate uh, the fixing 
of a, a, a plastic underlay. The top button is fixed 25 millimeter from the roof crown. Uh, the rest of the button are evenly spaced between the eaves and the crown. So it's very important, colleagues, so that uh, it's, it's very important for our learners to differentiate um, between the button that is used at the eave and the buttons that is uh, used to fix fixing of a plastic underlay because their measurements are not the same. So some of the learners will want to mix or confuse them. So let us assist our learners. Right, colleagues, uh, installation of a touch roof, of which I believe most of our learners, uh, they are not familiar with the touch roof, hence the poor response from our diagnostic report. Most of learners, they didn't perform well uh, when it comes to roofing. And so let us try to see uh, what we can do. But I believe this examination uh, prep uh, will help them more. Um, one, under touch roof installation. Nail the rafter pole uh, to the roof truss. Uh, the roof pole must be at least 100 millimeter in diameter. And uh, uh, the rafter pole 38 in diameter. Uh, very, very important colleagues for our learners to understand that. And then um, uh, place layer of a special aluminum foil or other uh, fireproof material on top of the rafter pole to the to delay the spread of fire and i understand colleagues when it comes to um what's that uh when it comes to uh, tile uh, tiling covering uh, we normally put underlay there so um if learners they come across a question that says why uh, must the aluminium foil be put between the rafters there for touch roof? They must be able to answer question question like that. So it, must, it is important for them to, to understand the fireproof material on top, on top of the rafter pole. And then, uh, sorry colleagues, uh, use bundle of clean, dry, high quality touch measuring at 150 millimeter thick and fix them to the rafter pole using bailing or tie tie wire there and then uh, the touch roof overhang must be constructed at least 4.5 meter from any neighboring property in order to reduce uh, the fire hazard finish the uh, rich capping right now colleagues i believe we can see there we are having two pictures of a uh, touch roof so if it's first time for some of our learners to see touch roof, uh, at least today they are having that opportunity to see it. And I believe uh, on our left hand side we can see the ridge, uh, was that the 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 ridge capping. And then since we spoke about um, the pole must be at least hundred millimeter, I believe we can see that round pole. It looks like the electricity pole that are used in our areas. Uh, so the diameter is um, 100 millimeter. So it's very important for learners to know that. And then the rafter pole must be uh, 38, millim 38 millimeter. I believe, colleagues, we can see there where we have our arrow. Um, we are having our, uh, what was that, um, a rafter pole of which is 38 millimeter. And uh, um, the other thing that I want us to look at there, uh, colleagues, is the bailing. Is uh, what was that? The pole being used, bailing or uh, tie wire. I can believe we can see those small things that are that they are having space, space, space in between. Those are our tie wire for touch roof. So it's very important for our learners to understand that, colleagues. Now, let's look at the spacing of roof trusses, pilings, and battens, and it's some of the uh, things that our learners didn't uh, perform well or didn't manage. To answer them maybe it's because of lack of content knowledge so i believe today they will gain more understanding of that let's look at class a class a colleagues um we are having congregated iron sheet congregated square section and then it's ibr sheet congregated transparent sheet and then congregated fiber cement roof sheet so the pitch for congregated iron sheet square sheet ibr and transparent sheet uh, it's uh, five degree and then for congregated fiber cement is 11 degree. So maximum spacing distance, roof truss, is 1,400 
uh, millimeter. So if we can also look at the maximum spacing between palings and battens, it's 1,200. And the dimension of palings or battens, I believe colleagues for um, sheetings, like they've mentioned, concrete iron sheeting, square, uh, uh, square sections, uh, transparency sheet, we also spoke about that. It's 50 by 76. But if we can look at congregated fiber cement roof sheet, it's 76 by 76. So class B is congregated and clay roof tile. And then we have fiber cement tile. For congregated clay roof tile, um, maximum in pitch, it's 17 degree. And then maximum spacing, 650. And then a maximum spacing between palings, uh, it says type and size will determine the center to center. Uh, spacing there usually is 350. But if we can look at the diameter of the palin, uh, it's uh, 38 by 38. And then uh, if we can look at uh, fiber cement, we have 10 degree. And then maximum uh, spacing between roof trusses, colleagues, it's 760 millimeter. So I believe we went uh, uh, through the spacing between palings and the dimensions between palings and button. Class C, we are having touch roof and then uh, touch thickness of 150 millimeter. Uh, let us not, uh, our learner, forget that. And then um, touch thickness of 300 uh, millimeter. So there's a difference, colleagues, uh, under uh, what's that minimum pitch in degree. So our learners must differentiate between 150 millimeter because the pitch is going to be 45 degree. When it comes to touch thickness of 300 um, millimeter, it's going to be 35 uh, degrees there. So the maximum spacing between roof trusses, uh, colleagues, is going to be 760 millimeter. Maximum spacing between palings is going to be 300 uh, millimeter in terms of the spacing. So the dimensions uh, of battens, their colleagues, is going to be 38 millimeter round pole. So colleagues, um, I want our learners to look at, at some something. When it comes to uh, congregated iron sheet, uh, palin is being used and they must understand the spacing and the dimensions of our palings. When it comes to uh, concrete tile, um, the spacing and the buttons that has been, uh, has been used, our learners must be able to differentiate that even if the spacing between tiles and then under our touch roof, the spacing between our poles, um, then the uh, was that uh, the dimension of a palin that is being used there. So uh, roof underlay. The roof underlay is the material uh, installed under the roofing tile. It is located between the biting and the rafter of the, uh, 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 of the roof trusses. It is uh, stretched tight and kept in place when the biting are nailed on top of them. The underlay acts as a water Proofing. It allows rainwater that is blown under the tile to flow to the gutter, thus preventing any water leaks through the roof. So it's very important, colleagues, um, that our learners understand why a, a roof underlay has been installed. Right. Um, now, colleagues, let's look at our um, uh, two pictures there. Uh, the baiting and roof underlay are fixed to the rafter. I believe picture on our left hand side, you can see we have uh, rafters there. Uh, no bitings has been installed or no uh, palings has, has been installed. But uh, if we can look at picture on the right, it's the same house, colleagues. Ne? So, but here we are having our under uh, lay of which we know the color, sometimes it will be because uh, we have different uh, materials of underlay and it's very important for our learners, if they can understand that as well. So we are having our, uh, uh, our underlay as a plastic uh, sheeting there that is being used. Um, so on top of that, uh, they've put it was that uh, our, our batons, because uh, plastic uh, was an underlay, it is installed between the rafter and the, and the batons. So it's very important for our learners to understand that so if we have pictures and if we have videos to show them, uh, they will have, they will gain better understanding of the subject and it won't be difficult for them to answer some of the questions that they come across. Now, uh, let's look at the purpose of the purpose of underlay. 
Uh, it lowers the suction pressure under the tiles and reduces the risk of the wind lifting the tile. Uh, it helps to reduce the load on concrete roof tile when a difference in pressure or okay care between the internal roof space and the internal surface. It helps to reduce wind noise in the roof. The underlay used for touch roof delay the spread of fire. So colleagues, let's look at two things here. One, we have a, 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 a underlay for concrete roof tile and the last bulletin also speaks about uh, the underlay for touch roof. So if they will say learner must distinguish or differentiate or maybe explain the difference between uh, the underlay of a touch roof and the underlay of a concrete roof tile. They must be able to answer that since we can see the underlay used for touch roof delay the spread of fire and then the underlay um, for, for concrete roof tile, um, it reduces the risk of wind lifting the tiles. So, um, so let them look at those things and be able to differentiate them. So colleagues, advantage of um, roof underlay. One, act, it acts as a secondary roof. Number two, uh, weather shield during construction. Another one, uh, waterproof and water, oh, waterproof and weatherproof. Number four, condensation barrier, dust proof, protects the building or structure protects the thermal ins uh, insulation material. So it's very important, colleagues, if our learners can know advantages, maybe it will say just give three advantages of roof underlay. So if they know, they will gain uh, three marks there. So uh, we have um, if construction with waterproof roof underlay. So the first thing, colleagues, that I want our learners to understand from this picture here, one, is for them to label it. Number two is for our learners to finish the drawing because there's a possibility that they will get the incomplete drawing or, or maybe they will find that um, our waterproof underlay is not installed and then they will have to draw it. So it's very important if our learners can understand how to draw uh, 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 the construction if and even if how to label it. Right. Uh, let's look at the ridge uh, construction with waterproof roof underlay. One, um, I can. Uh, it's very important if our learners they can be able to draw it or even if just to label it is very very important. And they must understand again, colleagues, what is the purpose of a, a ridge capping? Why ridge capping is being um, installed there? And then I believe the dimensions for batons is something that we spoke about rafters and then the concrete uh, roof tile, so they must not forget that. So colleagues, before we can uh, conclude our chapter, before we move to another chapter of ex excavation, let's look at the comparison of a structure and use of a baiting and pallet. Number one, baiting. Baiting are used to fix tiles to roof trusses and they are spaced 300 millimeter apart. Uh, the roof trusses of concrete tiles, roofs, are also spaced near each other to be able to carry the load of a tile. So colleagues, our learners need to understand why uh, roof trusses are close to, to one another or, or, or are spaced near um, uh, each other. So the measurement of the uh, batons are 38 by 38 to be able to withstand the weight of a concrete roof tile, colleagues. And then pilings. Uh, are used to fix galvanized con uh, congregated iron sheeting to trusses and are spaced 700 millimeter apart. The roof trusses of congregated iron sheet are spaced further apart because the weight of the sheeting is such less than that of roof um, roof tile. So if we, we can look at buttons and palin bulletin number two. Uh, for baiting it says the roof truss of concrete tile are also spaced near each other to be able to carry the, 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 the load of the tile. Another one, it says for, for, for palings, the roof trusses of congregated iron sheet are spaced further apart because the weight of a sheet is less than that of a concrete roof tile. So it's very important if learners can 
a, a, a distinguish between the weighting and the spacing of the palings or buttons. And I believe uh, these are the questions that we can come up with when we teach our learners so that we can expose them to different cognitive uh, demands. They must not just read, read, read and come across surprises when they write uh, examination, the way questions are phrased. If we can train or teach them well, they will uh, do wonders. Uh, the last one under palings. The measurement of the palings are 50 millimeter by 76 to be able to withstand the weight of the sheeting, although the roof trusses are spaced further apart. Right, now colleagues, let's look at roof previous um, questions there since we went through our uh, chapter there. One, uh, it's uh, 3.1. We are only going to focus at uh, roof colleagues. This is the 2019 question paper uh, whereby Lena didn't perform um, well. According to our diagnostic report, I believe we saw that even if 3.1 learners, they even fail to, to, to give the minimum pitch. So number 3.1, it says, what is the minimum pitch of the roof when class B fire cement tile are used to cover a roof? Number 3.1.2, what is the uh, maximum distance of the spacing between roof trusses for concrete roof tiles? And then it says one mark. Let us not forget... Uh, our learners can also use a uh, mark allocation to lengthen um, their answers. But here we can see it's one mark, uh, one mark for each uh, question there. Uh, what are the dimensions of a paling for 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 touch roof? And colleagues, if our learners can look uh, on top of 3.1.1, they have a box um, with answers, but most of learners uh, couldn't manage to get those three uh, questions right. Uh, maybe it's because of lack of uh, uh, knowledge uh, content. So I uh, will discuss the memorandum thereafter. Uh, on the same question, question three, colleagues, uh, like I've told you, uh, roofing, it, uh, it weighs 18 marks. Um, for 3.5 is 15. If we can go back and we can check number 3.1.1, 3.1.2, 3.1.3, .3, it's 3 marks. So when we add, it's 18 marks. So the total, it will be plus or minus 18. So let us not just leave our learners uh, to lose marks just like that. So at 3.5, it says use answer sheet 3.5 and draw to scale 1 is to 20. It lost a, a, a couple roof terrace with a pitch of 30 degree and a span of 3 meter resting on two supporting walls. The if overhang is 400 um, millimeter. Uh, then if we can look, it says use the assessment criteria on the answer sheet as a guide. It says 5 marks. So colleagues, um, when Lena read 3.5, they are only going to get a statement like it is phrased there. So they must go to the answer sheet 3.5 and check the, assess, uh, the assessment criteria. Assessment criteria will guide them uh, 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 how to draw or how to go about with some of the things. Because it says wall is going to be two marks, wall plate is going to be two marks, and then uh, rafter, uh, ridge beam, and a tie beam. Any three labels, and colleagues, our learners, they don't label. Imagine just losing three marks for labeling. Dimension of the span, they must also indicate it on, the, uh, on their drawing there. And colleagues, uh, when it comes to applicable of scale, because um, this question, they use mask, mask to mark it. If there are more than five, learners are going to get one mark, not zero, uh, unless they didn't draw anything there. So three or four marks, if, uh, okay, three or four, if, in, uh, if incorrect, learner will get two marks, one or two. If, uh, if they're incorrect, learners will get uh, three marks there. So it is very, very important, colleagues. But before learner can answer this question, they must understand uh, what is meant by close couple roof thrust. If they can picture that in their mind, they will be able to draw using a scale. And remember, um, I believe we have, we have a, a, a six of our, uh, what's that, our roof that I spoke about. Uh, like, I've, uh, like I've mentioned, we, had, we talked about South African hot trust. We spoke about lean to roof. We also spoke about couple roof trust. We also spoke about roof coupled, uh, a closed coupled roof trust. 
and we can see question five is requesting for it and we also spoke about a collar tie and we also spoke about king post so uh, 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 the examiner will ask or request any drawing of his choice so let us teach our learners to be able to draw all the drawings maybe if they are they have been asked to draw one they are able to do so so now let's look at the memo uh, our answer for number one it was 10 degrees number two 3.1.2 it's uh, 650 millimeter and then uh, number 3.1 is going to be 38 round pole of which i believe all we spoke about that and i we saw the pictures uh, of a touch roof uh, and then uh, number 3.2 uh, no that one is for a baluster uh, colleague so i'm not going to speak about that and 3.3 now let's look at our picture uh, here colleagues number 3.5 uh, i believe you can see this is our closed couple roof where and then we are having our assessment criteria and the drawing not drawn to scale a mask must be used to mark this question so colleagues um, at, at marking center uh, markers they draw it according to scale and then they print it on the transparency paper so they're going to check the, apli uh, the application of scale. They are not going to do, to deduce or just use their imagination and say, no, this is not according to scale, no. Uh, they are being fair. They use uh, the right tools to uh, credit or to give learners uh, a mask, mask there. So it is very, very important, colleagues, for our learners to draw the drawing that we spoke about according to scale. If they are not uh, going to use scale, they are going to lose a lot of marks, colleagues lot of marks so let us teach them and i and i believe it's possible for learner to get 15 out of 15 and if they can get 15 out of 15 i believe they can also get 18 out of 18 for roof terraces so let us not disadvantage our learners so uh, let's look again uh, at uh, 2018 uh, question paper colleagues 3.1 it says what is the minimum pitch of a roof when class a congregated iron sheet are used uh, to cover a roof and then number two he says state the maximum distance for the spacing between roof trusses for congregated iron uh, 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 iron roof sheeting and uh, number 3.3 .3, differentiate between the timber used to fix a roof tile and roof sheeting by means of a neat freehand sketches and if you can read this uh, colleagues he says differentiate between the timber used like i've said to you maybe the question again will say differentiate between a, a, a South African hot dress and maybe a, and a king post by means of a neat freehand drawings and it will say four marks. And now, so are we saying our learners are going to lose marks because of that colleagues? No. So let us make it a point that uh, we finished the curriculum and we did everything in our, our power. Let us be a, a good um, uh, judges so that when times comes, learners must not uh, blame us but I, I i believe in you colleagues that you did uh, the right things so number 3.4 what are the measurements of a palings for congregated iron uh, roof for sh uh, roof sheeting i believe um, some of learners and colleagues who are watching they are busy coming up with um, uh, their answers they are waiting for me to, to 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 show them answers to the questions that we are dealing with number 3.5 he said uh, differentiate between the spacing of a roof truss for clay tile and roof truss for fiber cement. And then they said copy the table below of which I didn't include the table, but let us read the question. It says differentiate between the spacing of a roof truss uh, for clay tile and the roof truss for fiber cement. Now, um, let's look at 3.6 before you can go to our memo. It says uh, below shows a vertical cross section of of a part of construction at the ridge of a roof truss identify a to d right now let's look at our memo colleagues at 3.1 answer it's 5 degree 10 or 30 degree and then uh, if we can look at 3.2 their colleagues it says it's 1400 millimeter and then in terms of the drawing 3.3 well and they were supposed to draw a a, a, a baton or a palin and then um, write the name underneath. Uh, there we have, and then they will gain marks, 3.4. Um, we have a 50 millimeter by 76, or 76 millimeter by 50, or 76 by 76. 
Uh, if we can check the spacing of a roof clay and fiber cement, the spacing is 650 millimeter, uh, says uh, closer together, and then for fiber cement tile, it says 760 millimeter further apart. So I, I believe uh, if our colleagues use past question paper as a resource and, and, and as a revision tools to train our learners, learners will be able to answer most of the questions as expected. Uh, right, now let's look at question 3.7 that says draw in good proportion a neat sketch of a collar tie roof truss with a pitch uh, 45 degree resting on two supporting walls. Show the following on your drawing walls, wall plate, rafter, uh, collar beam or collar tie and ridge. And if we can look at our assessment criteria there colleagues, uh, learners, they are not being given scale. It says in a good proportion. But I, I, I believe in the drawing, there are a lot of measurements. Some of learners uh, will use their discretion to use those measurements to draw. Some of them, they will just draw a small drawing, but they are not going to be penalized uh, that much. But the ridge beam correctly drawn, you can see colleagues, they are going to get one mark. Uh, for color tie, it will be one mark. For rough tie, it will be two marks. For wall plate, it will be two marks. For walls, it will be two marks. So if they draw two walls, they will get two marks. If they draw two wall plates, if on top of the walls they position uh, their wall plate correctly, they will get two marks. But if they place them wrong, they are not going to uh, they are not going to be credited marks there. So even if they draw their rafter correctly, learners will uh, get marks. So let's look at uh, our memo for three point seven. Uh, the drawing has been drawn. So you see, colleagues, it says wall plate wrong position. It will be uh, minus one. So maybe learners will get uh, one mark. But if they did draw uh, two walls correctly, they will get two marks there. So uh, if we look at the color tie, it will be one mark. Ridge beam correctly drawn, it will also it will also be um, one mark there. So it is very important, colleagues, uh, to read or drill some of the topics. There are those topics that weigh more more marks. Uh, before we can uh, move forward and talk about the excavation of which that is going to be our um, last topic. Uh, the question paper, when, when you check question two, it, 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 it has uh, uh, 40 marks and calculation also uh, got how much? Uh, 10 marks. So if learners are able to answer uh, Rufi of which is 18 marks, I believe they will have around 60 something. Before they can go and answer excavation, like I've said, excavations, uh, it weighs uh, something about 14 marks. Our learners will, will, colleagues will perform very well. We'll see them moving from level twos to, le to, to level threes. Even if uh, those learners who they don't have um, that more insight when it comes to uh, our subject, but if we drill them well, they will be able to answer most of the question. Now, colleagues, if we look at the excavations, of which is our last uh, topic for the day, and we're also going to look at um, questions uh, together with um, answers, uh, it will assist our learners. And I, I believe, colleagues, we know that uh, excavations weigh 14 marks, so um, we, we need to also look at it so that learners, they don't lose marks. Um, Let's look, colleagues. We have um, safety factors and um, regulations before any construction site can commence. Before uh, uh, excavation, uh, uh, safety factors and regulations, uh, before excavation commences, there are things that learner must know and remember there. Number two, what causes an excavation to collapse is some of the things learner they have to ask themselves, and I believe answers are there in their textbook. So it's very, very important for our learners to, to go through some of the things. And the, the third one is safety during excavations. So if learners can understand the safety during excavation, they have to ask themselves about the safety of excavation. Uh, and then they will be able to answer. Because I've noticed some of the learners, they mix safety after excavation and safety uh, 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 during, during ex excavations. So if they can, when they write their notes, they place their things correctly and they find a, 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 a different way or a certain manner whereby they can understand a lot of things. I believe even if when it comes to this chapter, they will do wonders, colleagues. Um, 
Let's look at excavation to obtain a level site. Colleagues, we are going to look at preparing the site. We are also going to look at this excavation to obtain a foundation trench. We are also going to look at the safety when working in deep trenches. We are also going to look at um, keep excavation from uh, collapsing there. So uh, let's look, colleagues. Esca excavation is the removal of earth, uh, usually to allow the construction of foundation or basement. Number two, excavation is constru uh, 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 in construction can be described as the removal of the topsoil and leveling of the ground to create a firm surface. The third one, the digging of the foundation trench are set out in the working drawing. So colleagues, um, at the construction site, people don't just go and dig. They have, um, uh, uh, what's that, working drawing and everything in place. So uh, I believe we can see here, colleagues, we are having uh, two pictures. The first picture on the right, we have fence and then we have our um, people working there and then we can see the topsoil have, has been removed or they are busy removing it. And then picture number two on our right hand side, uh, colleagues I can believe we can see um, is the found, uh, the, the, that, that is a construction of a, a basement uh, parking there or just a basement. So uh, I believe if we can, when we teach and show our learners this kind of pictures and talk to them. They will have a better understanding. They can relate even when they study. Sorry, they can even if um, recall what they have saw. So uh, let us try to organize and show them before they can go and, and, and write the exam. So colleagues, there are factors that can influence the design of a building. Um, if we can look, we have ge a geographic location of the site. We have slope of the ground, we have position of the tree, uh, we also have vegetations, we also have uh, rocks, uh, underground water, uh, soil type, building in the vicinity. And there are a lot of things that an uh, engineer or surveyors must look, or even if a, a, a construction, a, a site manager. Before anything can happen, um, a ground water, rocks, they uh, uh, even if trees, and so a uh, slope of the ground is some of the things that they must um, look at. Right, be, um, before foundation can be laid, a trench needs to be excavated, colleagues. Excavation of a small building such a house are excavated by hand. I believe you can see picture A there. Uh, we have a person uh, digging the foundation or excavating um, by hand. Uh, number two, while bigger buildings constructor such as multi-story buildings require the use of mechanical excavator i believe you can see picture b their colleagues uh, uh, for multi-story buildings colleagues the was that mechanical excavator is being used before excavation commences ensure that the competent person evaluate the stability of the ground uh, draw up a safety plan and take sufficient steps to ensure safe working condition uh, erect fence, fencing around the perimeter of the excavation site. Ensure that all excavation takes place under the supervision of a qualified person uh, whose appointment has been confirmed in written. Uh, carry out inspection to determine whether there are electrical cables, water pipe, gas lines, or any other service, uh, service pipes in the area to be excavated since this may affect the excavation pro uh, processes. So it's very important before the excavation uh, commences. These are the things that must be looked at. So um, let's look uh, what causes an excavation to collapse. One, colleagues, uh, it's heavy rain. Number two, poor soil strata, uh, structure or composition, a site not ducked at the correct angle, improper use of a formwork or shoring to support the walls, uh, vibration, be mechanical or heavy uh, machine nearby, Water seeping into the ground or area, uh, into the uh, excavated area. Uh, contact with underground services, access to and exit from the excavation. Uh, soil uh, slides due to crack or loose soil. So those are uh, things that causes uh, foundation to collapse. Let's look at the safety during excavation. Um, fence of the area and post warning signs that are clearly visible even at the night or when visibility is poor. Number two, 
red or orange warning light must be visible when work is done uh, done at night. Uh, worker must wear hard head and protective clothing. Uh, the excavation site must be covered at the end of the day. When the area needs to be filled, extreme care must be taken. Qualified person must operate the machine. And the other one he says no person is allowed to work at the excavation site on his or her own at the construction site because they may put their life at risk or endanger others. Uh, the entrance to and way out of the excavated area must be monitored, provide a safe means of exit if the trench is very deep. Uh, let's look at excavation after. Remember if we, we spoke about uh, before commencement and then we spoke about um, was that a safety during and now we are talking about after the excavation has been completed. It says keep excavation soil and other material at least 600 millimeter from the trench edge. No load or vehicle or plant equipment should be placed, driven or used on or near the edge of any excavation where it is likely to cause a collapse and endanger workers' life. Test for atmospheric hazard when the trench are more than 1.3 meter deep. No worker will be allowed to work or move in trench deeper than 1.5 meter if the sites are not protected by formwork or brace. Uh, excavation site must be well lit at night. A red warning light uh, should be placed strategically uh, in order to warn the public of any excavation hazard. A suitable barrier must be provided where any excavation in more than two meter deep. Cover the entire work area after hours, especially if children might gain entry to the site. Um, the area should be condoned off and warning signs must be posted and clearly uh, visible. Drench should be inspected at the start of every shift. Right, colleagues, let's look at preparing the site. Um, site preparation is the first and most important step in the construction process. Land surveyor and environmental engineer will inspect the site. Bulldozer, scrappers, excavators, and other type earth moving equipment are commonly used to prepare the site. Um, after the site inspection, the following must be performed. The site must be cleared properly and all loose soil must be removed. The site must be leveled. The basement must be established. Now, colleagues, let's look at the three pictures. Uh, but before we can talk, let's look at uh, preparing the site, bulletin number three. It says, land, oh, no, first bulletin number two. It speaks about land surveyor and environmental engineer. And then it, it, it also um, speaks about bulldozers, scrappers, excavators, and other uh, type of earth moving equipment. So if we can look, um, we are uh, on the picture on the top right. We are having our TLB there, and then we are, uh, the site is being prepared. And then if you can look at a picture on um, the top left, uh, we are having our roller there, colleagues. Uh, so they are leveling the site before anything, and I believe we can see that there were, there were a lot of moving, uh, actually, earth moving equipment that took place before uh, anything can be done there. And if we can look at the bottom picture there, the site is not that clearly level. That really shows they are still busy with the site. So site clearance, removing of vegetations before uh, 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 excavation can start. So uh, let's speak about uh, clearing the site. All trees and vegetation must be cleared from the site. I believe as we saw uh, from the pictures, uh, when excavation work is carried out near an uh, existing building, an area of uh, at least two meters must be cleared around the building. Any pets like termite nest must be um, exterminated before buildings start. If the site is located in a rocky area, a specialist must determine um, how to remove uh, the, the rocks. Let's look at leveling the site colleagues before a site can be surveyed it must first be leveled like we saw the pictures uh, this can be an expensive exercise as filling or cutting away slope can take days excavated soil can be used to level 
an area, land surveyor and engineer will ensure that the correct levels are obtained before any work can um, commerce colleagues. Excavation to obtain foundation um, trenches. I'm not going to go through all of them, colleagues. Let's look at the first bulletin. Every part of an excavation should be inspected at least once every day while persons are employed there. Uh, the working end of every trench more than two meter deep should be inspected by a competent uh, person before the beginning of each shift. Uh, all form work must be erected by a competent person and any alterations or dismantling of a form work must be done under strict supervision of a competent person. All struts and braces must be properly secured so as to prevent uh, their accident, displacement um, or fall. Um, let's look at the safety when working in a deep um, trenches. Excavated material must be kept at least 600 millimeters away from the edge of the trench. Uh, keep heavy equipment, vehicles and material away from the trench edge. Ensure that while the excavation is open, uh, underground installations such as sewage lines are protected, supported or removed to safeguard workers. Inspect trench at the start of each shift. Inspect the trench if changing ground condition are likely. Um, uh, safe means of exit must be provided for excavation of 1.2 meter deep. And then trench deeper than 1.22 uh, meter must be tested for atmospheric hazard, such as uh, low oxygen levels, hazardous fume or gases. Check the position of cross brazing and checks uh, in order to prevent shoring from moving. Workers should receive information and training with regard to safety and a correct procedure to follow so as not to endanger themselves or others. Colleagues, let's look at um, shattering for form swipe. And I believe uh, this is the one of the questions that Lena didn't perform well and they were not credited for such. So, um, uh, colleagues, um, let's move to shattering for shallow trenches uh, as well. So, uh, the question paper last year, if, we, if we, we can look at the polling board there, colleagues, because you see we have a polling, polling board of 152 multiplied by 38 um, millimeter there. And then you can also check the spacing between, you can also check the folding wedge, uh, the struts there being in, uh, being installed. But if you look at um, a firm soil, the polling board, the distance in between is not the same uh, 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 as for shattering for shallow uh, trenches there. So it's very important for learners to understand that uh, even if as colleagues, you must not just say, no, uh, here we are having a shattering for firm soil, you can see, just know how to, how to, how to draw, but there are spaces there. Learners must know why every component has been uh, installed there. Even if when we check a shattering for shallow trenches, learners must know why those spaces are so narrowed and why every other uh, 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 um, components are installed. So if they have that understanding, I believe it will be easier for them to answer uh, some of the questions. So let's look at uh, previous questions in memo of which I believe um, it will be our last discussion for today. Right. Um, 2019 paper question number four. Um, it says the excavation of a soil on a building site is necessary to establish a firm foundation. We have 4.1.1 up until 4.1.5. Number one, it says what is the minimum distance that uh, excavated soil can be stored from the trench? Um, so it's very important, colleagues, but we'll also look at our answers. Um, it's number two says what is the safe distance for heavy machine to move around a deep excavation? Number three says describe two reasons why an excav uh, excavation can collapse. Uh, number four says what is the uh, maximum depth of a trench in which worker can work without the sides of a trench being braced? Uh, number five, it says what can, uh, what can help to prevent the site of excavation from uh, collapsing. 
let's also look at 4.2 before we can look at our memo colleagues. Uh, it says below shows the two type of shattering used in excavation. Study figure 4.2 below and answer the questions that follow. 4.2.1, it says state uh, where shattering A and B will be used respectively. And then it says name C and D. Um, then it says compare figure A with figure B and state the difference between uh, the type of shattering. So if we look at our memo colleagues, uh, 4.1.1, answer there, uh, it's 600 millimeter. And then 4.1.2, answer there is one meter. And then number three, we have heavy rains, uh, uh, poor soil strut, side not dug at the correct angle, improper use of a formwork or shoring, uh, water seeping into the ground, access to and exit from excavation, soil slides due to cracks or loose soil. If we look at uh, 4.1.4, the answer there is supposed to be 1.5 meter. And then 1.5, it says benching can be done, formwork or shattering can be installed. So if we look at 4.2.1, um, number A, uh, it says will be used in shallow trenches or loose soil. Here we are talking about shallow and a firm soil colleagues. And then um, number B will be used in a firm soil. Number C, answer there, it's a boiling board. Number D is a walling board. Number A says has no spacing between the body. And then number B um, has opening space between the body. So I believe um, the differences that Lena uh, had to spot their colleagues, they were supposed to use their general uh, knowledge. Let's look at our last um, question for excavation. 4.2 from 2018 uh, question paper. It says excavation of a loose soil is necessary on the building side to reach a firm soil base. It says explain three safety factors that should be considered after the excavation has been uh, completed. 4.2.2 uh, says describe three tasks that must be performed after the site inspection uh, in order to prepare the site. Uh, let's move to 4.3. It says on answer sheet 4.3 show a trench that has been excavated. Use answer sheet 4.3 and draw a neat uh, a sectional drawing in a good proportion of a shattering for form soil. Use the following on your drawing. Folding wash, rolling board, pouring board, and struts. And it says any two labelings. And not forget, not forgetting colleagues, a question for excavation, it weighs uh, 14 marks. So now, let's look at the memo for 4.2.1. For, for I'm not going to go through all of them, colleagues. One, it says um, keep excavated soil away from the edge at least 600 millimeter. Identify any equipment that will affect the trench stability. And then trenches should be inspected at the start of each shift. Trenches should be inspected after a rainstorm. No worker will be allowed to work or move in a trench deeper than 1.5 meter if the site are not uh, protected by form of uh, formwork or braced, right? Let's move to 4.2.2 colleagues. Uh, it says the site must be level and the site must be cleared properly and all loose soil must be removed. A baseline must be um, established. So if we look at 4.3, uh, the drawing, which, uh, if we can see, says their colleagues, shattering correctly drawn and then and also um, wedge uh, pair also uh, drawn correctly. So I can, we can see uh, that the drawing, even if we have the same drawing in our test books. So I believe if our learners, colleagues, because for every question, from question three, question four, question five, question six, learners are going to be requested to, to, to draw some of the drawing. And I believe, again, colleagues, for each and every question, the cognitive uh, 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 levels or cognitive demand are going to be there but learner they will understand those things based on the phrasing of the question so it's very important colleagues if we can uh, help or assist our learners there so colleagues uh, that was the conclusion of our exam uh, examination prep so i will just like to say a uh, uh, class of 2020 good luck with your final examination and prepare well and i hope and believe you're going to do all your best uh, if you are busy studying and you find that you don't understand some of the things, please use your phone to Google some of, some of the 
pictures for particular topic that you are dealing with. It will help and assist you to have a better understanding uh, of the knowledge. And also, colleagues, thank you very much for the tough year uh, because we know what Corona uh, brought for us. So, but despite of Corona, I, I, I believe in you. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.